What's up, meatbags? I am the often imitated, never duplicated Tony TGD coming at you with another video. This time we're going to settle this little input lag debate once and for all. We're going to find out the truth of the matter. We're going to dig deep and we're going to discuss the whole controversy, if you will, about input lag on the Intellivision Amico. Now, originally I wasn't planning on doing this video. I had to work today. I was hoping, hoping to have a nice easy Saturday. I got some shows to catch up on. I need to make a video later about uh, my favorite retro games. But uh, you know how it is. When you're the number one Amico channel on YouTube, everybody wants to know your opinion on things. And you know, what did my man El Pacino say? Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. So here I am back in discussing input lag. Now, um, I think I could say definitively, 100%, no doubt in my mind, that there is input lag on the Intellivision Amico. Now, um, you gotta, you gotta realize that every console, every system has input lag. This isn't a thing that uh, people have made up. This isn't something that's been targeted at the Intellivision Amico. This is a thing that exists. It is real. It is on all consoles, PlayStation 4, Xbox, Switch, PlayStation 3, you know, everything has input lag. So the question should have never been, is there input lag? The question should have been, how much and is it an acceptable amount? So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive deep into it. We're going to take a look. Now, uh, the first video we're going to look at is uh, this Finnegan Fox Television Amico gameplay footage. Now we know that in this video the controllers were inverted so we're not going to worry about the uh, dial, the disc, the disc pad, disc um, spinner, whatever. I don't know what the official name of it is but we'll just call it the disc. We're not going to worry about that for two reasons. One, like I said, we know that the controls in this particular video are inverted. And two, we have learned that they are very pressure sensitive and possibly the uh, games are not optimized for the different levels of pressure. They might be still running off of the hardest amount of pressure in order to get characters to move on the screen, whereas people, you know, are mistakenly not put, putting enough pressure on the pad to get it to actually work, to get it to click to where it needs to be. And without it in my hand, you know, I can't really tell you exactly how hard you need to push to get it to work in this particular game. And I can't tell you if uh, Tommy is actually doing it for this game. So we're going to skip the disc pad. We're just going to look at the touch screen. So I uh, got this running at quarter speed. And if you uh, note, Tommy's not jumping. Now he's going to put his finger on the touch screen to make Finnegan Fox jump and you can see that when he does that it takes a couple of frames before Finnegan Fox jumps so uh, we know that there is some input lag like I said this is running at quarter speed but there's uh, other factors at play now uh, if we look at this screenshot from a uh, Cyrus Martin video we can see the controller this is the controller that was used what was it yesterday 3 26 2021 this was used we can see that it says uh, version 1.8 now we're gonna it's probably safe to assume that that's the firmware for the controller now we don't know if on February 3rd that was the firm firmware that they were running it could have been a 1.6 could have been a 1.5, could have been 1.8. We don't know. We don't have that information. So we could have been updated the controllers. They could be uh, more optimized. It could be running better. <clears throat> but in the particular Finnegan Fox video, we've seen that there were a couple of frames. Now, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, get the fancy shit out and count them. You know, someone else can do that. Leo, you, you love doing that. You can go ahead and get the video back up and count the frames between the button press and when he starts jumping. But uh, we can see that it's a little bit. Like I said, this is the new controller. Uh, I'm assuming it's the newest 
firmware. I could be wrong. You know, we we don't never we never know with these things. You know, Tommy might be running some old firmware, or this might be the only one that they had optimized for those particular games. I don't know the exact situation. I don't have all the information. I'm just going off of what I have. So if we look at this video by Cyrus Martin, now uh, everybody's been focusing on the uh, disc pad during the uh, Dino Blasters game. But we're not going to do that. We're going to look at this, uh, I believe this is Rigid Force Redux for uh, the, Amico, the Amico version. And now, I assume this is Tommy's hand. I'm not sure whose hands these are. I believe they're Tommy's. But uh, he's using the disc pad to move. And he's using the touch screen to fire. Now, we're going to watch the video. As you can see, he's shooting, shooting. Now right here, he's not shooting. His finger is not on the button. It's not on the touchpad, rather. Now he's going to tap the touchpad. And then <clears throat> we're going to see how long it takes, you know, whether or not it's immediate for the ship to start shooting again. Oh, shit. I gotta back it up. See, this is what happens when you don't edit. Bear with me. There you can see he's hands off the button. It's not on the touch screen. No, nothing being fired. Boom, he touches it. Nothing getting fired yet. And you can see it took about a frame or two <coughs> to fire the first shot in this uh, new volley. So once again, there is some input lag. It's in there. I don't know how many frames. Someone else can count it. That's not what I do. I don't have that capability, and I'm really not going to dive that deep into it, you know. But uh, there's a couple other things we need to discuss, a couple other factors that really haven't been brought up. So if we go over to this website here, it's displaylag.com. This is the database for TVs. Now, I'm not sure exactly which TV is being used in these demos. It looks like it's the same TV for the Finnegan Fox and the... Uh, the one that they had at the video game museum it looks like the same tv like they're bringing this tv around that everything is hooked up to they probably already know where the cords go and everything it's a real easy you know switch out as you can see you know we got brands sizes you know what year they would come out in if you look it says rating and then it's got input lag 11 milliseconds 12 milliseconds 14 now if we uh mess with the ratings here we can see that some TVs are all the way up to 96 milliseconds some uh, 55 inch TV from uh, Memorex from 2016 we got one here that's 112 milliseconds this is a sharp from 2015 so as you can see you know TVs can add a little bit of uh, input lag so I mean if we knew the brand of TV. We could probably <clears throat> chalk up to the amount of input lag that was uh, being added by the TV. <clears throat> and now, uh, if we look at the same website, displaylag.com, this is the uh, video game input lag database. I got it all set for just PS4 games. <clears throat> As you can see, different games running on the same software, the same hardware, rather. Uh, all running on the PS4. You got some games that are 4.2 frames of lag. And you got Dead or Alive here is all the way at 8 frames of lag. <clears throat> that was the demo. Uh, Street Fighter V Arcade Edition, 6.3 frames of lag. It's got an okay rating. So as you can see, you know, different games running on the same system can have different levels of lag. So Finnegan Fox might have seven frames of lag whereas rigid force redux might only have five frames of lag 
we don't know. We can't be 100% sure because we don't have the controller in front of us to do an accurate test. But we can give a sort of, you know, uh, roundabout average or, you know, a good educated guess, if you will. Now, just judging by the two videos that we saw and all the things I've heard from people and knowing exactly how uh, many frames per second that Finnegan Fox runs at, thanks to uh, discussing it with the dev, uh, I could probably say that there's probably going to be an average of five frames of lag in total on most games. It probably won't be noticeable. I mean, people who are, you know, more competitive players, people who play games like uh, Smash Bros., or uh, you know, like Street Fighter type games. People that are really, you know, competitive professional gamers, they'll probably notice a little bit of lag. Your average consumer probably not gonna notice anything. I mean, they probably don't notice it to begin with. But there will be a little bit of lag. Like I said, it's probably gonna be five frames. It's not gonna be ten. You know, that was uh, a lot of mistakes were made because of the inverted controller situation. And probably because Tommy wasn't pressing the disc pad hard enough, you know, the game might not have been optimized at that point. But we're probably looking at about 5 frames of lag, which is not bad. It's uh, acceptable lag. Like I said, no one on the uh, average gamer is going to notice it. No one on the casual gamer side is going to notice it. Only the most hardcore of hardcore gamers will probably notice any kind of input lag. But, uh... I think I think we've you know we've put a final nail in the coffin of this discussion. We can move on to something more important. There is input lag. It is probably at an acceptable level. Most people are not going to notice it. And you know, it is what it is. Like I said, you know, if I had a controller in my hand and an Amico hooked up to a TV where I knew the exact specs of the TV, you know, I could uh, control how I was pressing the buttons, how I was pressing the disc pad, I could probably give you an even more accurate assessment. You know, it might bring it down to four frames a leg, it might bring it up to six frames. But I'm going to say we're going in the four and a half to five and a half range is probably where it's going to be at. Some games like Rigid Force Redux probably are going to have less lag because the game was already out for other systems. It's already been optimized, it's already been worked on. Something that is brand new, you know, built from the ground up, may have less lag just because it was built for the controller, or it may not because, you know, it was done by a studio that might not have the experience or the capabilities to actually fine tune it. They don't have the controllers. I know there was an issue with certain developers not having controllers yet, so, you know, some of the builds they show might show a little bit more lag just because of that. But like I said, I think we could finally move on from this. I think I've, I've settled it. I hope I've put everybody's mind at ease. I hope that everybody's satisfied with this, you know, conclusion that I've come to. I'm not going to discuss it anymore. The input lag debate, as far as I'm concerned, is being put to bed. Four and a half to about six frames of lag on average. Acceptable levels. Only the hardest of hardcore will notice and probably not even them because the games that are being built are not being built where it needs that level of precision, timing to, uh, you know, really matter. But that's all I got to say about that. You know how we do it here. Love, peace, booty grease. We have this bitch.